At exactly 8.18 a.m. this morning, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit of God speaking. And this is the word that I received at that time. Take shelter and hide beneath my wings. Beware of the storm that is coming. And the word that I received from the Holy Spirit of God today was in the book of Hebrews 12, 22, and 23. It was the general assembly. How God, in this gathering place, in Mount Zion, the church of the firstborn, the firstborn from the dead, Colossians 1 and 18, Mount Zion is the gathering place that God will gather together in this place, Mount Zion, this church. He will gather the spirits of just men. He will gather his church with an innumerable a company of angels. It is the gathering place that God will gather us all together beneath his wings. Remember Jesus said to the children of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, how he would love to gather them as a mother hen gathers under her wings her little baby chicks. And then it made me think of Psalms 91. And I love Psalms 91. How we will take shelter hide beneath the wings of God. How he will gather us together into one place so we can take shelter from the heat, from the storms, from the troubles of this world. And then it made me think of the book of Revelation 12 and 14. How on the wings of a great eagle, the remnant, Jeremiah 31 and 2, what is left of Israel that's attacked, will find grace in the wilderness. How the Spirit of God the eagle's wings will carry them into the wilderness to find grace, to take shelter. And I received this good word from the Holy Spirit at 8, 18 a.m. this morning when I heard him say, Hide. From the storm that is coming. Take shelter. Beneath my wings. So think about this today church. Think about these words. That the Holy Spirit of God has spoken. Today. Because it's certainly going to make me think. What is coming. We all feel it. We are all on high alert. You see, church, the pieces of the puzzle are all swirling around. They're all coming together. And the Holy Spirit of God told me years ago, you do not need all of the pieces of the puzzle to reveal to you the end. You only need enough of the pieces to come together to reveal to you the end. And I said, yes, my Lord, I agree with that. And I am seeing enough of the pieces of the puzzle coming together to know that we are living in the last days. We have been living in the last days 
when Jesus was sent out from the garden in Genesis 3 and 23. See, Jesus was sent. Adam, Genesis 3 and 24, was driven out. But God sent the last Adam into the world. The end has been coming since 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the tree. The end has been coming since the temple was destroyed. So you see, church, we have been living in the end longer than you think. We have been seeing the signs of the end from generation to generation. But I believe that you and I are living in such a time as this to where we are seeing the prophecies unfolding right before our eyes. That the signs that we are seeing now has never been seen before. So we know that any time, any time, the bridegroom and the door will be opened and we will go home. So I'm going to think about this today, the words that the Holy Spirit of God told me to take shelter to hide beneath his wings because that is our place of safety is in God and I'll tell you something that I know about the Holy Spirit of God he don't just tell me something like that just for me just to walk away and not meditate on that word but in enough of time he will reveal to me, and I will see why he gave me that word. Because I always know it's not for nothing that he has given that word for a reason. But church, think about the Mount Zion. It is the gathering place where God will gather the heavens and the earth together in one place. Amen. I don't know about you, church, but I am ready to be gathered up. To be caught up. And gathered together in Jesus Christ. Think on these things today, my dear precious friends. And if you need prayer, please don't be afraid to ask I will pray for you day or night. I will stand with you in prayer and in faith. Keep me in your prayers, church, and you remain in mine. Have a blessed and victorious day today. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray. And let the church say amen and amen. Church, the Holy Spirit of God is also warning against the darkened mind and the darkened eyes that we have certainly been warned of in the book of Ephesians 4 and 18, and we have been warned of in the book of Romans 11 and 10. The darkened mind. The darkened mind is a mind that is full of darkness it is spiritually dead. It is separated from the light of God. And the enemy, the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, has blinded the mind to keep you from the glorious light of Jesus Christ. Now the Holy Spirit of God is warning that this is happening all around the world how the enemy is trying to blind the mind's eye from you seeing the light of the glorious gospel of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. 
because he doesn't want you to be saved. He doesn't want you to be delivered from this torment, from this hell that you are living in. Because you see, the devil likes tormenting you. He likes having that power over you that one day he can throw you into the fire and the next day he can throw you into the water. Remember the man that was possessed by the devil. The devil loves to torment you. Do not allow him to do that. You have power and authority over him. Bind him. Cast him out in the great authority and power of the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Church, you don't have to be tormented. You can be set free. God wants you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So I bind that devil away from you. And I cast him out in the name of Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And by the power and the great authority in his holy name, I take authority over that lying devil that's lying to you, that's tormenting you, that has bound you, that you will be set free. In Jesus Christ, most holy name, we pray and let the church say amen and amen. Church, God wants you to be in good health. He wants you to have a sound mind and to live in peace. Jesus gave us his peace. And the peace of God passes all understanding. When you get it, you don't know how you got it, but you know you got it because you feel that overwhelming peace knowing that everything's going to be all right because you're walking with Jesus. Think on these things today, my dear precious friends, and I love you, and you have a blessed and victorious day today, my dear precious friends. Victory is ours, church. We are not defeated. We are not broken down. We are not beating. We have not been beaten by the devil. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. Now, church, you got to go within the kingdom of God that's within you. Release the power of that kingdom that is within you. For out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water of life. That's what should be flowing out of you right now. Don't allow that devil to lie to you, church. He is a liar. Now, you can't believe a liar, can you? Whatever lies he's telling you, you cannot believe it. The first time you give place to the devil, I promise you, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. And if you believe his lies, and he'll keep telling them to you. And if the devil sees that what he's doing to you is working, he'll keep doing it. How to beat the devil at his own game is simply refuse to play the devil's game. If you do nothing, you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Church, you have to renew your mind daily in the word of God. Renew your mind in Jesus' name, you've got to renew your mind. Get in that word. Speak that word out loud. Let your walls hear it. Let your house hear it. Faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Let everything in your house around you hear the word of God. Amen. Renew your mind, church. Renew it. And have a blessed day trying to tell you how to win victory church I want you to have this victory it's yours all you got to do is just reach out and claim it for yourself amen amen <laughs>